with me to the book of Romans at chapter 8. Romans at chapter number 8 and verse 28. And in your hearing, that verse reads, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Thank you. You may be seated. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to preach a minute about the paradox of precariousness. The paradox of precariousness. What what often look what often looks like a precarious situation. It's really the, the converse, the, the paradox of that. A paradox is one side of the sentence that seems to cancel the other side. Something like, our strength can only be made perfect in weakness. That's a paradox. Things that look like they're going to take us under. God uses them to cross us over. That's a paradox. A situation that looks precipitously and precariously dangerous for the believer. But if you trust God, all things work together for good. To them that love God and to them that are the called according to his purpose. In recent years, I have come to spend a great deal of time in line at the CVS pharmacy. Um, And many of us here over 50 can help me testify that if you live long enough you meet all your friends at the drugstore and at the doctor's office. You can have a family reunion. You can have a class reunion at CVS right there on OST. Because everybody your age is either on medication or refusing to take it. Because sooner or later, uh, you're going to break down. Uh, The pharmacist will take several bottles off the shelf, mix them together, and make of them a prescription. Some of the chemicals may be dangerous and even fatal by themselves, but when they are mixed together in proper amounts, they can heal your body. Have you ever considered that that's how God works in the life of the believer? He takes all of our problems, all of our situations that look so terrible at the beginning, And he mixes them together in the crucible of his love and produces something in our lives that's wonderful medicine for the soul. In this great verse that we read often, Romans chapter 8 verse 28, Paul reminds the Roman Christians about the paradox of precariousness. This process allows God to take all of the circumstances of life, good and bad, bitter and sweet, 
and blend them together into something wonderful. He can take all of life and turn it into a situation that works for our good and for his glory. It doesn't always feel good. It doesn't always look good. It doesn't always sound good. But if God is in it, it'll work out for the good. I want you to walk with me around the text and consider for a moment the certainty of God's promise. The certainty of that promise. We know. No qualifications. No questions. We are not diffident. We are not equivocating. We are not unsure. We are not vacillating. We're not guessing. We know. We, we know. For we know. No doubts. No questions. No qualifiers. We know. We have some first-hand information. We have some experiential knowledge. We've come through too much. We've seen too much. We've, we've watched God work in our lives so that we are at the place in our faith where we can say we know. Yeah. His reputation stands or falls on his word. Romans chapter 4 and verse 21. Abraham never wavers because he was fully convinced that God is able to do what he promised. F.B. Meyer says, if any promise of God should fail, the heavens would clothe themselves in sackcloth. The sun, the moon, and the stars would reel from their courses. The universe would rock and a hollow wind would moan through a ruined creation because God told a lie. But the fact is, God cannot lie. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18 says it is impossible for God to lie. Titus chapter 1 and verse 2 says God never tells a lie. Heaven and earth would pass away. I wish I had a Bible reader here. God's word can be trusted because on God's word stands God's reputation. And whatever God promises, he is able to perform. We know. We are certain. Uh, we have no questions. We have no qualifiers. We have no doubt. We are not backing up. We are not equivocating. We are not vacillating. We are not guessing. We who are believers, we know. Brothers and sisters, some things can't come to you unless you have some personal knowledge. Uh, you, you have to hurt. Uh, you have to be bruised. You have to go through some things. Some things people can tell you, but you can't understand it until you go through it for yourself. And then when you come out of it on the other side, you have the testimony of every believer who has been tried and tested in their faith. We know. A faith that cannot be tested is a faith that must not be trusted. You, you, you can't talk about how good God is if your ship is in dry dock. 
You got to get out there where the water is deep. With no life jacket. With no lifeboat. Mom and daddy is not around. And you've got to depend on a loving God who's able to do exceeding abundantly. I wish I had a witness here. You've got to be out there where if God don't come through, I'm through. If God does not come to my rescue, I could lose my house. I could lose my mind. I could lose my job. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. And somebody who's had God to come through in a clutch can testify, we know. See, folk who know don't have much time for folk who guess. Folk who know can't even sit by folk who guess it. No, no. When I, when I come to church, uh, I, I need the Lord, but I need my brothers and sisters to confirm what the Lord just told me. And I need somebody who has been through what I'm going through to tell me that this too will pass. Ever got a witness here? I need somebody who has been strengthened by their own trials to let me know that weeping may endure for a night. But if I keep the faith, joy comes in the morning. We know. That's the, that's the certainty of the promise. But now I want you to look at the completeness of God's promise. We know that's certainty that all things that's completeness. I looked up the word all in the dictionary <laughs> and there are about 20 definitions for all. But the best definition for all is all. God, God can take some sweet things and make them work together for your good. I wish I had a witness. The birth of a child, uh, the marriage of your son or daughter, uh, a raise on your job, a promotion where you work, a new house that you just qualified for, a new car. That's a sweet aroma that'll make you believe that all things work together for good. But then God can take some sorrowful things. The death of a child, the passing of your mother or your father, getting fired on your job, losing your house or your car, finding out that some folk you thought were friends have been talking about you behind your back, hoping that you would fall and not be able to make it, but God is still behind you, pushing you forward. That's still a wind of the Holy Spirit blowing in your life and when they think you're about to fall down God is right there propping you up all things God can take some sweet thing God can take some sorrowful thing then God can take some satanic thing satanic thing God will use the devil for your good I wish I had a Bible reading you remember Job unbeknownst to him a conversation went on in the heaven because the sons of God presented themselves, and in their company was Satan himself. 
And God said to him, what you doing here? And Satan, of course, as he always does, is going to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. And God says to him, have you considered my servant Job? I wish I had one or two more Bible readers. Satan said, I thought about it. I had him on my radar. I, I've, been, I've been thinking about him. But I left him alone because you got a hedge of protection around him. Come, come on, help me preach a minute. If you move the hedge, I'll make him curse you to your face. And you remember all the things that happened in Job's life. And the Bible says with all of Job's troubles, he never charged God foolishly. He said, naked came I from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. The Lord gives. I wish I had one or two more witnesses. The Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And you got to know some stuff before you can say, I lost everything. But blessed. Blessed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job said, all the days of my appointed time, I'm going to wait till my change comes. Though you slay me, Yet will I put my trust in you. Though you take it all away, I'm going to church Sunday morning. Though my health is failing, though my children are acting a fool, though my family is in a mess, nobody's going to know it because I'm going to shout Sunday morning. I'm hurting, but I'm going to praise your name. I'm crying, but I'm going to lift my hands in the sanctuary. I don't know what tomorrow looks like, but I'm going to trust you. And somebody ought to help me testify. Won't he come through? I said, won't he come through? Then help me say, we know. That's the, the certainty, the completeness. God will take some sweet things, some sorrowful things, some satanic things, and some sinful things. Some mess we got ourselves in. But God can turn it around. Somebody ought to help me here. And then he loves us so much that although he hates sin, he covers the sinner. There's somebody in this church this morning like me who got some sins you glad God covered. Let me run it by you one more time. There's somebody in here like me who got some sins that you glad God covered because you might have been found out. But he looked beyond my fault. And for not for my sake, but for the sake of his own name, he covered me. That's, that's what the blood of Jesus does. It, it covers me. <clears throat> I wish I had one or two more believers who can help me testify that the mess I got in and God brought me out of, it made me a stronger believer. 
It made me more tender hearted toward people who are in trouble because I've been in trouble myself. Have I got a witness here? It made me more empathetic towards people who's got some problems that they're struggling through because I've struggled through my own situation. That's the, the certainty of the promise. We know the completeness of the promise is all things. We know that all things work together for good. All things work together for the good. That's, that's thirdly, the cause of God's promise. The cause of the promise is that they work together for good. They work together for good because of the awesome power of God in the life of his children. It's God's power that's at work in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. There is no goodness in you. You are good if you're good at all because of God. Wish I had somebody to help me. Um, we, we, are, we are with God like the sun is with the moon. The moon has no light of its own. When you see a full moon, that's not the moon shining. The moon is farther away from the earth so that it might absorb the reflection of the sun that you see it in its fullness. But the moon by itself can't shine. Somebody ought to help me get where I'm trying to go. Because the moon has no light of its own. The light of the moon is just a reflection of the sun, S-U-N. You and I have no light of our own. We are just reflections of the sun, S-O-N. So let your light shine before men that they might see your works but glorify God. I wish I had one or two witnesses here. They will see your works but they won't give you any glory. Because all the glory belongs to God because he is the one who shines in us. Stop bragging on how holy you are. How righteous and good you are. The right set of circumstances? Somebody ought to help me preach it. I've never looked at another man. The right man ain't come along. I've never looked at another. That's because the right woman hasn't come along. Satan knows your taste. Come on, brethren, help me. Satan knows what you like. And he ain't going to put nothing in front of you that ain't going to tempt you. And I'm not just talking about a woman or a man now. I'm talking about power. I'm talking about pride. I'm talking about money. I'm talking about success. Anything that turns your head away from God, Satan will use it. To trip you up. Uh, The certainty of the promise. The completeness of the promise. The cause of the promise is the awesome power of God. But then there's a condition 
to the promise. And we know that all things work together for good to them. Here's the condition. That love God. That's the condition. I'm not talking about Sunday morning love. I need you to, I need you to be praying for me, uh, cause my father in the ministry died this week. BB uh, King. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> BB said, "It's my own fault, baby." Treat me the way you want to do. Because when you was loving me, at that time I didn't love you. That's a whole lot of theology in that. When, when God was loving me, I wish I had somebody to help me. When God was blessing me, when God was shining his light on me, I was acting a fool. Anybody here can help me testify? You know you've been blessed. You know God's been good to you. But you haven't given him glory in your life like you know you should. The condition of the promise is that you've got to love God completely. You've got to love God more than mother and father brothers and sisters houses and land because if you put your hand to the plow and look back you're not fit for the kingdom of God no man can serve two masters he will love one come on help me preach it, and despise the other come on talk back to me here Bro, you, you can't serve God and the spirit of the age. That's, that's what I want to say to these young adults on this young adult Sunday today. You got to love God with your whole heart. You can't be half-hearted in your commitment to God. One of the things that bothers me about young adults is that they think the church just got started when they got here. What y'all think we've been doing? We were young adults too. At one time, we were young adults. All of us had children. All of us had responsibilities. The church would have died if we had put our responsibilities before the kingdom of God. See how quiet you got right there? Now you were shouting just a minute ago when we talked about all things work together for good, but when I got to them that love God, we got kind of quiet, because you got to put what you want aside. You're not too young to praise God. Come on, talk back to me here. Don't put your children and your wife and your house before God, because God can take that stuff away from you, just like he blessed you with it, he can take it away from you. Don't let that be a barrier to you loving God. No, 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 no. Your children don't come before God. Your wife don't come before God. I wish I had somebody to help me here. You got to love the Lord with all your heart. With all your soul. With all your strength. With all your mind. You got to put your career down if it means that you can't love God completely. Because if God closes that door, somebody who can say, I know, can help me testify that if he closes this door, he's getting ready to open another door. And the door that he's getting ready to open is better than the one he just closed. Yeah. Well, we know 
that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the call according to his purpose. That's finally the consequences of that call. The call. Which means there is a general call and there is an effectual call. The promise in the text is not for everybody. Uh, because only those who love God will have things work out for the good. But the converse of that is people who don't love God will never have good things work out for them. Stay with me here. All things work together for good to them that love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. But if you turn that verse around, if you don't love God, don't look for things to work out. See how quiet you got again? Because nobody makes a fool of God. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, I wish I had a Bible read. That shall he also reap. If you sow good seed, you get a good harvest. But if you sow corruptible seed, you get a corruptible harvest. And some of the stuff that's coming up in our lives right now is stuff that we planted 30 years ago. And God is not going to deliver you from the consequences of your bad choices. He forgives you, but he doesn't erase consequences. Come on, help me preach if you can. Now here's why we got to hold on to this verse. Because the rest of the chapter is bad news. Uh, and, and so God gives us verse 28 for what's going to happen through verses 29 through verse 39. That's going to be some persecution. Uh, some distress. Some famine. Some nakedness. Some peril. There might even be a sword. But if you hold on to verse 28, then nothing shall be able to separate you from the love of God. I need verse 28 when there's strife in my family. I need verse 28 when Satan is on my trail. I need verse 28, when somebody I love, I have to bury. I need verse 28, when my health starts to fall apart. I just need to be assured that God has not left me by myself. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but somebody came here today for assurance. That what I have to go through, I don't have to go through it by myself. God is right there. And he's able to step in my situation and make a way out of nowhere. Somebody might be on the pew with you this morning who has to face a doctor's report on next week or the week after next. Or you already know what the doctor's report has said. But you've got to have confidence that all things work together for the good to them that love God and to them that are the called according to his purpose. You're going to help me close this, won't you? Sometimes it doesn't look good, brothers and sisters, but God is working it out for the good. Sometimes it doesn't feel good, but God is working it out for the good. Sometimes other people are mashing on us and trying to pull us down. 
saying, if you love God, these terrible things would not be happening to you. But don't get discouraged when storms come because God is a very present help. I need somebody who can help me here. In the time of trouble, you're going to help me close this, won't you? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foe, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host should encamp against me, in this will I be confident. I wish I had a Bible reading. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Here it is. For in the time of trouble, you're going to help me say it, won't you? In the time of trouble, come on, help me say it if you can. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. Is there anybody here ever had a time of trouble? Is there anybody here ever had some lonely days? Is there anybody here ever had some sick days? And the Lord came to your rescue. If you're not ashamed to testify, come on, help me praise the Lord. Is there anybody here had some sinful stuff in your past, but the Lord still bless your life? You made a whole lot of mistakes, but you're in this sanctuary this morning because can't nobody do me like Jesus. If the Lord open doors for you why that woman who was shouting earlier that's who I need to help me right here if the Lord made a way for you you ought not be ashamed to testify if the Lord put food on your table clothes on your back money in your pocket if the Lord covered your sins you ought to help me praise his name. Why don't you hug somebody? Why don't you grab your neighbor? Tell him I got a story to tell. The reason why I shout so much, I got a story to tell. The reason why I raise my hand, I got a story to tell. You don't know my story. That's why you criticizing my praise. But give me a minute to tell you, it was nobody but Jesus. Nobody but Jesus. Come on, shake somebody's hand. Preach to them like I'm preaching to them. It was nobody. Come on, you can preach it. Raise your voice and preach it. It was nobody but Jesus. He brought me from a mighty long way he kept me from hurt, harm and danger ain't he alright ain't he alright I know I know he's alright he walks with me he talks with me he hold my hand. He got my step. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody, 
nobody, nobody, nobody, nobody, nobody, nobody, nobody, no, nobody but Jesus could have kept me in my mess. Nobody but Jesus could have surrounded me with his love. Why don't you hug somebody and say whatever. Come on, preach it like I'm preaching. Whatever. Come on, tell them like you mean it. Whatever you're going through, this too will pass. This too won't it pass? I said, won't it pass? I need somebody who can say, I know. <laughs>